This is Channing Lowe. Welcome to Chin Fat. In this episode, I'm going to be showing you guys how to do an equipment setup for the GH5S with an Atomos flame, mat box, tilt a cage, and the new PD movie wireless follow focus, which is pretty cool. So, in the next episode, I'll show you how to do the uh, kind of uh, programming setup for the GH5S and the Atomos as well. But uh, we're going to start off by kind of showing you some of the equipment I use to set this stuff up here. And uh, I like to use with these kind of a little bit bigger of a camera setup than just a regular DSLR or just mirrorless camera standalone. Uh, you like to use a little bit of a heftier tripod. So with this setup, as you see here, a Manfrotto 509 HD professional video head, which is a 100 millimeter bowl. So it's set up for a little bit uh, bigger camera with these uh, Miller Carbon Fiber three-stage tripod legs for the 100 millimeter bowl as well, supporting that head that, that I've got there. Uh, you don't need those legs necessarily, but uh, these ones I really like. They will support up to around like 60 pound camera, so it's a it's a pretty hefty uh, tripod setup. And this is the Pelican 1650 hard case. I've got my whole GH5 setup uh, loaded in. This and I kind of did like two layers here. I have one where I can pull off the top layer that has a cardboard. I made a cardboard bottom for it, and then I put my lenses in the bottom layer. So kind of all my GH5 stuff fit in this one kit here. Now this is a uh, Tilta 10-inch standard lightweight dovetail plate. Uh, this I use so you can do easy on and off access to the uh, the tripod or other other units. Um, but you can see that little back clip there to the right that helps the, the camera not be able to slide off. Uh, so that's a little preventative feature there. So I'm going to take out the speed plate and uh, you see that pin there? That pin is where your, uh, the, is the direction of the lens. And you want to make sure that your uh, tilt plate is lined up with that. I put it on what is seemingly upside down here. And uh, so I've got that pin, that little safety pin, uh, toward the back of the, uh, the camera, not towards the lens. So you just got to make sure that you get that all, all put on properly. You see that little pin sticking out, that little uh, safety pin picking up, poking out toward the end there, so right there. So that's on the back of the camera, uh, and you see that... So you can basically put the camera and slide it forward. Now this is the tilt uh, cage for the GH5S here uh, that uh, you can attach other things to it. You can attach the Atomos to it. You can attach follow focus to it. You can attach a whole bunch of things. It's got a bunch of quarter inch and three eighths inch screw holes on it. Uh, and here is the speed plate. I'm going to push this little pin down to release it and pop it off. Uh, it also has a little slider lock on it. And I'm putting on the Panasonic Lumix GH5S mirrorless camera. The Micro Four Thirds uh, sensor is the camera that I'm being used here. Really, really nice in, in low light. Not the GH5, but the GH5S is the one that really does well with, uh, with low light. Uh, so I'm putting the speed plate for the cage onto the camera here and make sure that you got it on the right direction there. Uh, I'm going to screw that on, tighten it up, get it pretty tight, and we're going to put this into the, install it into the cage. So. Uh, all these components that you see here, aside from the camera, are components that come with the um, with, with the the tilt -a cage. Now I'm going to take this little uh, operation cable and plug it into the top right hand corner of the camera before I slide it on. It makes it easier to get that cable in. That's going to be like a, a the ability. It's going to give you the ability to stop and start your recordings with the with the wood handle that comes with it. And slide that on until it clicks past the pin, and we're going to tighten up the little uh, lock lever there so the camera can't fall out. And uh, then we're going to put a mount uh, the HDMI holder here uh, toward the top of the cage, and I uh, put on the t on the uh, um, on the front side, uh, just like two pins down is about the right location for me. And tighten that on, and now I'm going to grab the HDMI cable that comes with a tilt -a cage, and we're going to plug that into the camera, and then we're going to plug the, and then we're going to put it into the uh, HDMI holder and that keeps the um, <clears throat> this little holder here keeps your HDMI from being pulled and ruining the port on the camera so we're going to push that in and be careful when you uh, tighten that up because you, if you tighten it up too much it'll crush the HDMI port uh, so you just want to get it snug and not too tight or it will, will pinch that and crush it and you won't even be able to stick an HDMI cable into it anymore so you don't want to ruin that just make it kind of snug to hold that HDMI and there we go now we're going to install the handle we're going to take uh, the control cable we're going to Make sure the pin pin lines up and plug it in, and then we're going to tighten that on to the side of the camera, and uh, and then the the cage is pretty well installed. So tighten that on, and there's our wood handle, and there you go. And now our camera is uh, fairly set up. So this here is the base plate that goes onto the dovetail, and that this holds the rods, uh, the 15 millimeter rods that come with the cage. So we're going to put these rods on. Just wanted to show you how those come out there. And uh, I like the beveled end uh, toward the uh, camera. Here's the beveled end right there. And the other end uh, is you can add additional rods onto it by screwing them in if you want. So I'm going to 
line that up, slide it past the little clicky safety point, safety point. and uh, on this side here is the, is the slide lock, so I'm going to push that over and lock it so it doesn't slide back and forth. There we go. Now we're going to take the camera here and uh, put it on this. So you can see this little safety pin that keeps the camera from sliding side to side. We're going to start on that end and slide it over. And uh, now we're going to lock that into place. You have this little lock on the back that locks that into place and keeps her from sliding back and forth and sliding off. It also has that little safety catch. And this is the T-handle. We're going to take the T-handle and we're going to slide it on the top until it goes past the pin and tighten it up. And now we've got a little grip handle we can pick up the camera with. This little contraption here is going to power our camera and our Atomos. This is a th uh, th uh, three pin gold mount, Andy Pro Tools gold mount plate to Panasonic uh, camera dummy battery. So that uh, battery will plug inside of the camera and then you can put a, uh, a gold uh, plate pink, uh, battery on this and it will power your whole unit for quite some time. So I'm going to pop that dummy battery into the slot there and when you put that into the slot, the battery slot, you have this little cable hole right here on the front of the camera that the cable goes through so when you close the door it doesn't pinch the cable. So make sure that cable goes to that hole there and then you can close the camera, close the battery door and you're good to go. Uh, these here are Vedra Mini Primes. They're kind of expensive lenses but they're really nice uh, uh, micro four thirds lenses that work really nicely with the uh, GH5S um, so I'm, I'm going to mount this on. Uh, whenever you put these lenses on the camera, you got a little red dot uh, on the lens, and then you'll have a red dot on the camera that shows you where to position it to get this thing to lock in. You put those together, turn it to the right clockwise, and uh, and lock your uh, lock your lens on. I just put my lens caps uh, together and stick them back in the case so I don't lose them, don't stick them in my pocket or anything. Uh, this is a Fatka uh, DP3000 um, swinging. Uh, map box here that we're going to put on. And kind of nice. Uh, the, these map boxes are kind of nice. I'm gonna, actually, before we put that on, I like to slide the camera so it's just right above the plate there, so it's not going to block our follow focus or our map box when I put those on. So I'm going to put on the uh, the map box here. And these map boxes, uh, fairly affordable. They uh, actually swing out if you release the pin on them. Pull up the pin. Uh, these will swing out so you can uh, swap lenses quickly without having to take the whole unit off. This here is a Red Rock Micro Universal Lens Donut uh, for, a mat, for a matte box here. You can tighten this around the lens. This makes, eliminates the need to get like these uh, different sizes of donuts uh, to keep light uh, bouncing off of your, if you're putting uh, filters in your filter trays on the matte box. Uh, this one is specifically a 4x4 four four, uh, filter tray. They have 4x4 four four and 4x5 uh, this one. The 4x5 for, for the larger cam cameras usually, but uh, the 4x4 four four works really well for, with the Micro Four Thirds camera. Um, but that keeps light from reflecting. These are Draycast uh, gold mount batteries, and they also have uh, D-taps on them. This is the charger that's being used here. And this is the uh, charger. It's a dual charger. You can put two of the Draycast gold mount batteries on them and charge them at the same time. Uh, so I'm going to click that into place. You pop it in the holes and slide it till it clicks, and now my battery is on. We've got power uh, running to the camera. All right, I'm going to put on the uh, flags. I'm going to put on the eyebrow on the top here, and then I'm going to put on the side flags as well. Install these under the map box. So if you're getting uh, light hits from the side or from the top, uh, the uh, these flags will help block that light and make make sure you're not getting uh, lens flare when you're not, when you're not wanting it. So put on the side flags, and there we go, all installed, and uh, looking pretty good. All right, I'm going to be using, this is the Shogun Inferno, but you don't really need the Shogun Inferno Atomos recorder for uh, for this camera. It's kind of a little overkill because it's got the SDI inputs. So I would recommend getting the uh, Atomos Ninja Flame instead as an HDMI. It's a little bit more affordable as well, and it works just fine with this camera. So this is a, a Noga Cine arm here. We're going to use this to mount the, the Atomos onto the onto the cage. Uh, so th these are fairly affordable as well. This is an articulating arm, which helps you get it, uh, gets the monitor positioned in almost any position you need it. Um, so I, I straighten everything out and tighten it up so everything's locked straight. So the screws are straight and everything is a straight line up and down. It makes it easier to mount. And I put the uh, monitor, I, I attach it to the top instead of the bottom because I like the monitor to kind of hang down instead of standing straight up. It makes it a little bit more stable. Uh, so I'm going to tighten the screw all the way in, then uh, then screw in the rubber stamp to pressurize it so it holds on, and take uh, the quarter inch screw and screw it into one of the quarter inch holes here. Uh, do it lightly so it doesn't strip any threads. 
And uh, once that's on, now I can loosen the articulating arm and rotate everything and get it in the position that I want to to be viewing the monitor while I am shooting. I'm going to hang it down in front here like that so I can take a good look at it. This also has a sunscreen as well that you can put on the Atomos and build it for outside, so if it's too bright outside. Uh, now I'm going to take the SD card. There's an SD a solid state card that I put inside the Atomos case for this and then you can slide it in and click it right into the Atomos so you can record onto it. Now I'm going to take the power. This is a D-tap power that powers the device uh, and I'm going to take that D-tap and plug it either into the battery D-tap or onto the uh, adapter D-tap. In this case I'm putting it on the adapter D-tap there. Um, it's a standard D-tap and now I'm going to put in the HDMI make sure it goes into the input on the Atomos not the output and it's going to come out of the uh, GH5 here. So it's coming out of the GH5 HDMI. These are full-size HDMIs coming out of the GH5S. That's why I like that camera. And I'm going to power this on, see if i got power. And it's uh, booting up. So, yep, I can see the red light there going. So that's getting power from the camera. And we'll show how to set that up later. Uh, this is the, uh, it's a distributed by ICANN, it's called the PD Movie uh, Wireless Follow Focus Unit. This is a really nice uh, little unit here. Uh, very affordable, it's around uh, seven or 800 bucks if you just get the single motor with it for running follow wireless follow focus. Uh, this device does have a, a couple pros and cons. Um, one of the, and th this is the, the motor here that will actually run the focus. You have to attach an antenna to it. I'm going to put the, uh, the micro antenna on the motor here so it, uh, so it can receive informa the uh, information from your follow focus device. I'm going to screw that in and then we're going to mount it onto the camera. And I probably shouldn't have put the matte box on first because now I've got to have to take it off to get this on. And now I'm going to put on the motor here. And this has a 15mm uh, uh, rod adapter. And if you have 17mm, you just take that little piece, piece of metal out. And then you have a 17mm rod. Uh, but no, right now I've got a, that adapter piece in there, so it fits a 15. And I'm going to put the lens about in the middle of the focus here, so it's not on either end. And I'm going to tighten that up, get that fairly snug, and put it right up against the gear. So it's uh, uh, set in those uh, cine gears there. I'm going to take out the uh, power cable for it. And we're going to plug that power cable into the uh, D-tap. It's got a D-tap on one end and then it plugs into the uh, motor on the other side and that's going to power the motor. This time I'm taking the D-tap out of the battery. I have two D-taps, one on the battery and one on the, uh, the battery mount. So I'm using both of those, one for the camera and one for the motor. And if you're going to be running more motors you will need a D-tap splitter so it splits the power but I'm going to hold my finger down here. If you hold down the button it, it turns on automatically but if you hold that down uh, until the lens starts moving <clears throat> it will uh, do an auto adjust. It'll go to one end of the lens and to the other end of the lens and then it will be calibrated. Uh, this only works on uh, lenses that are um, that, that, have, that actually stop on one end of the focus range and stop on the other end. Uh, otherwise uh, you have to um, do a different setup for it. But this here is a nice little uh, kind of thumb focus or finger focus you can use. I'm not going to set that up one up right, right now but it's really nice for gimbals and just doing your own focus. <clears throat> but this is the uh, actual follow focus uh, kind of candy bar here they call it or something like that. That's because uh, it's long and flat um, that we're, we're going to hook up. We're going to hook up the longer antenna, one of the longer antennas on this so it has a, a good, good reach, good range and I'm going to hold down the power and turn this on. Once that power's on, it'll automatically connect uh, via Wi-Fi. Uh, this this um, follow focus unit connects via Wi-Fi. The smaller one connects via Bluetooth. It has two different types of connections. Once that turns on and connects, make sure you're on the same channel on the on the readout screens, um, and then you have full control of your focus from one stop to the other stop, from one end of the lens to the other. Uh, they, they're kind of one of the downfalls of these uh, devices. They're, they're very affordable, but uh, a couple of the devices actually have internal batteries that charge. You cannot replace the battery. You have to charge them with a USB cable, and if you run out of power, they do last for a long time. They run last about like six to eight hours. But if you are in the middle of a shoot, though, and it goes dead, you're kind of uh, left without a follow focus. So um, there you go. So yeah, both of these types have to charge. This one has its own charger cable, uh, has a USB on one end, and then it's uh, uh, kind of a Lemo uh, cable on the other end to plug it in to charge it. Uh, it also will keep it powered up if you have a powered device. But let's. Uh, this is the thumb one. Let's hook this one up. I'm going to put this on uh, a little um, pan handle here, and uh, then you got this follow focus wheel, and this uh, wirelessly transmits through Bluetooth, where the other one uses Wi-Fi. So I'm going to unplug the motor because uh, you're going to want to turn this one on first here. I'm going to hold my thumb down and turn that thing on until the light turns on. Just hold it down for about two seconds, and then plug in the motor. And then the motor will uh, it will miss the Wi-Fi, so it will automatically. Link 
link to the uh, Bluetooth and connect to this motor. Uh, you have to calibrate a little bit differently by uh, doing a quick, uh, quick button hit and then a long one, about a two second one, and it will auto calibrate uh, using, the, so, so it's a little bit different than calibrating the motor for the Wi-Fi. You do the calibration from the actual uh, uh, thumb focus unit. Once again, by doing one quick hit and then another long hit, it's almost like a Morse code, and the instructions come with a little Morse code uh, functions to program these things. So there you go. Now it's gone to one end of the uh, lens and then the other end of the lens and auto calibrated. Uh, so we have the full range of focus with this little thumb wheel here. It works great with uh, gimbals. Works great with uh, on a panhandle if you just if you're a one person uh, shooting machine. Anyway, uh, that is a setup for this device. Uh, the next uh, uh, my next episode, I will be showing how to program the GH5S and the Atomos as well and getting it set up for filming. So thanks for watching.